Okay, in this video I will be adjusting the valves on a 250 uh, non-integrated head but procedure similar uh, whether it's integrated or not. It's a uh, Sundy's 250 uh, straight 6 engine. I'm going to do the ad um, valve adjustment with it not running. Um, if it makes noise, then I'll have to go back and do it while running, potentially. Um, to start off, um, well, I've already got the head back on. I had taken it off for an unrelated reason. I've already marked the uh, position for each post. Uh, number one spark plug on this setup is right here. Often it's going to be right here on these engines, but this one the way that's lined up is right here and uh, then uh, before I took the head off I already had it at top dead center as I'll show in just a minute I uh, fastened this a little bit keep it in place for a demonstration Okay, so I've marked the sides where the uh, posts are, and then I'll just make it clear where each post is. That's already marked. This will be important when I get to the point of adjusting the various valves, and uh, I want to get to uh, where both valves are closed. If the valves aren't closed or in the closed position, then it's not. It's going to be hard to adjust it right. Um, so I just need to get basically top dead center for each cylinder one at a time. Before I took the head off, I got it top dead center for cylinder one uh, by lining up the uh, mark on the crankshaft pulley, harmonic balancer, or whatever you want to call it, harmonic damper, or whatever. And uh, I lined up the marks with the zero uh, mark on the tab right next to it. And the uh, rotor, the, and the rotor is lined up where uh, number one uh, spark plug post is. So uh, I'm already at top of the center for number one. And I can start. I can start actually adjusting number one. Uh, now, once I get the uh, push rods in, I'm going to admit to making a very stupid mistake. I call it stupid because it could cause excessive or increased wear, and I know better. Normally, when you pull up the push rods, you want them to line up or match the uh, other moving parts in that assembly so that. Um, they will the wear patterns will match up and you won't have increased wear if they don't match up then they have to wear down faster until they match up again um, I knew that I should have taken some cardboard punched 12 holes in it for each push rod and just put them in in order but I had the idea that if I just lined them up like uh, these two still in each um, in order in the valve cover then uh, it would just stay in place then it got nudged the valve cover and they all fell down so this is a warning don't do this okay so since these parts have been wiped dry uh, and uh, they're moving parts in the engine uh, I need to uh, put some kind of lubrication on the ends. Now um, some people just use soak it in engine oil and put it in. Uh, I use others will use assembly lube. Um, it's supposed to, from what I've been told it's supposed to uh, um, break up once the uh, oil starts flowing. Just need to uh, put a dab on both ends and since the camshaft is down here 
and behind this cover and the lifters um, I know this is the top because um, you can see where it, where it went through the uh, head there so I just drop it down put this up and apparently I'm going to have to loosen the uh, rocker if this is a 5 8 inch uh, nut and it has nylon on it so that uh, uh, once it's threaded in it won't move until you use a uh, socket that way the valves don't go out of touch or out of adjustment okay and while I'm at it I'll also add a little extra lubrication on the valve stem and now I have both push rods in um, so I'll dry my hands because the next step is to tighten it down until this push rod stops spinning since both of these should be at zero or at both valves should be closed at top dead center and just stop spinning uh, this push rod here, I don't know if you can see it in this lighting so I'll loosen it till I get to till it can spin again so now it's so it's at the point where it just stops spinning and then you have to tighten it down one full turn afterwards so I'll start right here and just turn this around one time and this is and this is the first uh, valve that I've gotten adjusted now it's time to do this to this one just keep moving around a little tightening until you get to the point where it uh, doesn't spin anymore So once again I'm at the point where it's just stopped spinning and my fingers pretty aren't that oily so it, it's uh, easier for me to uh, make sure that I have a good grip on it and now I just need to turn it one full turn, the entire ratchet handle one full turn like that and I'm done with number one cylinder. Now to move on, the next one in the firing order is number 5, right here on this engine. So this is at number 1 right here. I need it to the rotor spin to this mark. Now I have it lined up with the number, number 5 position and I could put these push rods in. I've got in uh, cylinders, the valves for cylinders 1 and 5 adjusted now. You do it in uh, the firing order which on this vehicle is right here. Let me show it. So the firing order on this vehicle is shown right here. Uh, 1, 5, 3, 6, 2, 4 and it start uh, number one on this the way this distributor lined up is right here that's number one and then number five which uh, it's at right now this is the point where the uh, both valves are closed it's top dead center for that cylinder and then I'll need to get to number six another way to, that some people tell when it's at the uh, put right position is when one valve's closing and the other's opening, but since the valves are not adjusted properly, I can't do that. Um, another important thing, which I uh, 
didn't think about at first was if you have a manual transmission, make sure it's in neutral. Because uh, I'm used to automatic transmissions with uh, old Chevys, and it doesn't matter. Uh, just leave it in park, and you're able to uh, rotate the engine, and there's no problem. But if you have a manual transmission, you leave it in gears, I found out. Uh, when you rotate the engine, the uh, vehicle either wants to move or the engine wants to uh, spring back to where it was. So that's why I need a neutral. Um, I don't have resistance from uh, pressure buildup in the cylinders because the spark plugs are removed. So all the uh, pressure buildup is uh, released. So on this engine I can actually turn it by hand and I just need to watch the rotor. I've already uh, and turn it to the uh, crayon mark that I made for number six, which is pretty close to there. Okay, so now um, I'm at the number six position on the distributor. Wait a minute. No, I messed up. That's number three. Now I'm at the number three position. It goes one five three six two four. So it's always good to double check everything <laughs> because uh, if you mess up here then your engine's not going to run right. Um, and it's non-interference so it, you're not going to bend a valve but if this was interference that would uh, bend a valve or break a piston if you uh, have it adjusted wrong. So it's always good, always good to double check and I'm glad I did so because the, the casting number is really difficult to read I just glanced at it and yeah so now it's time to do number three right here and then I'll, I'll get to uh, I'll go get the push rods forward and loop them up and start adjusting again <laughs> 